Maybe we should begin by mentioning an obvious one. That's what we call body language. That is, what we are saying by our posture, the way in which we hold ourselves, our gestures, that is, use of our hands, our facial expressions, all the things that say something to the other person, not through words, but simply how we present ourselves, how we move. Let's see, our eye contact, for example, is one that we may not think of right away, but it's extremely important, and our tone of voice. How about the meaning of touch? Touch communication, that is, who has permission to touch whom and under what circumstances? Okay, today we're going to begin our discussion of nonverbal communication. Now, experts in the field of communication estimate that somewhere between 60 and 90 percent of everything we communicate is nonverbal. How can that possibly be true? After all, we put so much emphasis on our words when we're trying to communicate something. We think about what we want to say. We worry about what we didn't say. We think about what we should have said. I mean, we're concerned about how the other person interprets our words, and we interpret the other person's words. So, there's enormous emphasis in all our interactions on words. What about this 60 to 90 percent that is supposedly nonverbal? What does that mean exactly? Okay, let me ask you to think about some of the ways in which you communicate nonverbally, just the broad areas. Maybe we should begin by mentioning an obvious one. That's what we call body language. That is, what we are saying by our posture, the way in which we hold ourselves, our gestures, that is, use of our hands, our facial expressions, all the things that say something to the other person, not through words, but simply how we present ourselves, how we move. Let's see, our eye contact, for example, is one that we may not think of right away, but it's extremely important, and our tone of voice. How about the meaning of touch? Touch communication, that is, who has permission to touch whom and under what circumstances? A very important point that I'd like to make is that nonverbal communication is difficult enough to study and understand in one's own culture. But it becomes extremely complicated when we are trying to understand how nonverbal communication functions in another culture. That is, one we're unfamiliar with. I mean, after all, if we're learning about another culture and learning the language of that culture, another language, what do we learn but words? The meaning of words and how they fit together and the pronunciation of words. So that when we learn French, we can take our dictionary and look up fromage. Or when we learn German, we can find out what Käse is. But there's no dictionary of nonverbal communication. So where do we find out what a certain toss of the head means? Or a certain blink of the eye? Or the physical distance between people? It's very easy to misinterpret these cues or to miss them altogether. If you're puzzled by what's happening to you in a foreign culture, it's probably the nonverbals that are causing the communication problem. So, the nonverbals are probably responsible for most cross cultural confusion. Let's see. Let me give you one or two examples of how this can happen. A simple one is with eye contact. Americans tend to think that looking directly into another person's eye is appropriate, and that if you look away or you look down, you may be avoiding responsibility or showing disrespect. And this is considered to be negative. We learn to look me straight in the eye. Look me straight in the eye. Now in some other cultures, it's a sign of disrespect to look at another person straight in the eye. In Japan, for example, there's much less eye contact than in the United States. So something as simple as that can cause great confusion. To give another cross-cultural example from Japan, I can tell you that when I first began working in Japan, I was, oh boy, I was awfully confused because I was paying attention to what was said to me rather than to the nonverbal cues. We have a study abroad program, and when I was dealing with my Japanese colleagues, I would often ask questions, you know, that had to do with the program for our students. And I would ask one particular colleague if we could make certain changes. Now, 
I have great respect for this colleague, and I know that he wanted to cooperate. There were times when I would ask him things like, for instance, can we allow students in the dormitory to stay out later at night? And often, the response I would get verbally was that maybe we could do that. And I always interpreted this as a green light, as a strong possibility. Because maybe, for me, verbally means maybe. Yes, probably, let's find a way. After all, he hadn't said no. What I didn't understand was that for my colleague, who didn't want to embarrass me by saying, saying, speaking the word no directly, which would be considered impolite in his culture, he was telling me no by saying maybe and giving me other cues with his body language. And I had to learn to recognize what those cues were. Well, can you imagine what they might be, for example? Well, I started to realize that it had to do with how he said maybe. It had to do with his tone. Whether he said, well, maybe, meaning maybe, yes, or maybe, meaning maybe not. It had to do perhaps whether he looked embarrassed or whether he looked uncomfortable when he said that or whether he seemed excited about the idea or not. Or, or maybe how he, his posture, his body posture, how he held himself. I had to start observing those things. Now, I'll admit to you that it's still very difficult for me because I don't understand the nonverbal cues in Japanese society as well as I might understand them here in my own culture. But now I'm much more aware that I have to pay attention to them and that I have to learn to observe them more carefully. And you know what? That's probably the most important lesson of nonverbal communication. That is, we have to pay attention to observe closely what is happening both in our own patterns of communication and in those of the people around us. And that this really deserves our study and our attention. I mean, it's not only extremely interesting, but it's so important if we want to understand the more hidden sides of communication.